Hello everyone, here in this video we are going to see how can we find the Spearman rank correlation when the values are duplicate or when we have repeated ranks. You can say it this way as well, okay. But before we proceed further, I just want you to take a moment and just check out this particular video which is first part of Spearman rank correlation where I have explained how do you find the rank correlation when the values are unique. Today we are going to see how to find the correlation when the values are duplicate. For example, if you take this one here, if you notice GDP 4 is repeated twice. So we're going to learn this. But in the previous video, I have explained how to find the Spearman rank correlation when the values are unique. Now let's try to understand how do we do this. Okay, before we proceed further, I just want you to have a look on this scary formula, but don't get scared, right? I will be explaining it to you. Now first, let's learn how to give the ranking when the values are repeated. Let's start the normal ranking how we did in the previous video. Okay, so the normal ranking will be here. I'm going to take an example we, here. I will find the smallest value and I will give that rank number one, but you can do it differently. You, if you want, you can take the maximum value and you can give that a rank one and then you can keep on increasing. Let's start. So here we have one. I'm going to give it a rank of one. Okay, now the other next value is 2. So I'm going to give it this ranking. Next value which comes in is this. So here I'm going to say rank 3 and here I'm going to say rank 4. Now you can also, you might also say why don't you say rank 3 to this one and 4 to this one. Or let's consider if all these are players and if this is their score then they might fight that how can you give us a different rank when we have the same score, right? So we have a solution for this. How can we do that? So we're going to take their rank values, okay, and sum them up 3 plus 4 divided by 2, which gives you 7 by 2 and which gives you 3.5. So we got the solution. We can simply say, dude, don't fight. Here we have the solution. You get this ranking 3.5 and 3.5. You both gonna get this kind of ranking now this person what is the ranking that we're gonna give it to it is it four no we keep the counting continued right till here we had four so the next value will come over here which is nothing but five so we don't stop the counting we continue the counting but wherever values is values are repeated we take their rank and find the average of that and then we allocate the same now here the rank will come to six so this is how we do the ranking when the values are repeated now let's have a look at the formula once again and here if you notice there is one value which is m and that has been explained over here this is nothing but the repetition of rank so the first rank which we got repeated over here this was so how many times it was repeated this was repeated twice so this will be our m1 m1 equals to twice now if you get another number and if that is getting repeated three times so you can say m2 equals to three this is how it works now here we have the beautifully created rank for gdp this is exactly same what we just did if you want you can just compare it now we will start ranking nifty here you get the value 1100 right and so here also you have to do the ranking same way find the smallest number and give it rank number one if you did that in this variable the same way if you picked the maximum value in the previous variable and you gave the rank number one then you again going to do the same thing for this variable as well for second variable as well okay the moral of this story is you're gonna keep the method same now let's start here we're gonna say rank number one rank number two again they do not fight so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of that and divide it which will give us a number which is 1.5 all right so let's give it a rank of 1.5 over here and here as well 1.5 5. Now, what is the ranking that you're going to give to 1200? Is it 2? No, because 2 is already consumed over here, right? So, we're going to say it 3. And then here it comes 4, here it comes 5. Again, they will fight. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sum of this, which is four plus five divided by two, which is nothing but nine by two, which is nothing but 4.5. So we're gonna say, boss, your ranking is going to be 4.5, 4.5. And here also it is 4.5 and here it will be six, okay? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I guess yes. All right, now let's see what happens next. So the next we're gonna get it a clear cut ranking. Okay, now the next step is find the difference between both of these two rank. So these two rank which we just created over here. So we're gonna find the difference between these two ranks. All right, so 2.0 minus 1.5 which is 0 0.5 and so on. And at the end, we're gonna sum them up all together. All right, not over here. Don't worry, you, you are not going to sum it over here. First, you need to find the squared value of this. So whatever difference you created over here, difference you found over here. Now you're going to take a square of that 0 0.5. If you take a square of that, that will be 0 0.25, which we just created over here. And this is how we have all this squared value of the differences. Now you're going to take a sum of this, which will be nothing but 9.5. Now let's have a look at the formula. So this is the formula and this is how we explain the M. Now let's put the value of each of the element. So if you pick out this particular element from the formula, which says summation of di square, this is nothing but this column, this particular column, whatever value you have in this particular column, you're going to take a sum of that, which is nothing but 9.5. So which we have over here. Next thing which comes is one by 12 into m1 cube minus m1 okay so in the previous we uh, in the previous slide we saw that the value for m1 was 2 so if you put that over here it's gonna be m m1 value is going to be 2 so 1 by 12 into 2 cube minus 2 same thing for m2 the value was again 2 right and because here 1100 was repeated twice so that's why we have the value 2 for m2 as well now for m3 we have m3 as well right so please consider this as m3 this is not m1 this is m3 now what m3 is so m3 is the rank value of this one right 1500 this was the third value which was repeated how many times it was repeated it was also repeated twice right so that's why we have 2 over here now if you have another value which is repeated then we would have m4 and so on it will continue now it comes to n n is nothing but the number of observation which you have in your data right here we have that is 6 now let's try to arrange them all together so it looks something like this so this 6 is the part of formula this 6 is the number of occurrence number of observation or number of rows which you have in your data don't get confused this is always going to be the same but this will change depending on your data okay now if you have 10 records in your data so this will be 10 if you have 20 it will be 20 if you have 9 it will be 9 okay now if you solve all this thing over here it will be something like this so here you see 2q so this is nothing but 2 into 2 into 2 minus 2 so what will happen is this all becomes 8 minus 2 equals to 6. So that's how we have 1 by 12 into 6, 1 by 12 into 6, 1 by 12 into 6. Now when you solve them all together, then this is what you get. 9.5 because see, when you solve this 6 to the 12, 1 by 2 is nothing but 0 0.5. All right, same thing will happen for this as well. So this comes over here, 0 0.5 and same for this. So this is how you get this kind of value. And when you solve this all together, this is what you get, which is one by one minus six into 11 by 210. And when you solve this, you're likely to get this value 0 0.685714. You might also get a different, slightly different value. I strongly recommend you just pause this particular video and try to solve this particular equation. And let me know in the comment section, what is the value that you got? But over here, 0 0.68 is the Spearman rank correlation for this particular series. Now, let me explain you how can you find this in Python. So, in Python, it's going to be very simple. Over here, I have this data created. All right. And now, how can we find this? 
particular correlation so for that all that you need to do is take the data in in your case if you have many variables so what you can do is you can keep the particular variables for which you want to find the correlation now we all know that okay let me put it this way okay only so here i have the scores of two subjects which is science and math and now i want to find the spearman rank correlation if you notice over here this also has the values repeated okay now in that scenario how is it going to give you the ranking and uh, means the correlation that's what we're gonna see if you see science mm, score 20 is repeated twice similarly okay now let's put these two variables science and then math and then you can find correlation oops there seemed to be something wrong let's see okay what's wrong because the spelling of math variable is not right what i write is math but the one which we had was math all right so here we got the spearman rank correlation which is 0 0.17 but hold on this is not correct because this is not spearman rank correlation this is pearson correlation so how can you find spearman for that what are we going to do is we're going to say method equals to spearman and then you hold this and now if you see the kind of correlation which we got is zero so both of these two variables have zero correlation means they are not correlated right so now we just learned how to find the spearman rank correlation when the ranks are repeated okay now in the next video we're gonna see the comparative analysis of spearman rank correlation and pearson correlation coefficient okay and we're gonna evaluate which one to use when and what which one has the advantage on another on something like that we are going to do very interesting analysis in the next video and we're gonna also see how can we make use of it in data science in feature selection and many more until then happy learning we should